Hey, good afternoon, guys. It's May 16th. Just want to lift you guys up and glorify Jesus' name and what he did for us. It's been a long two weeks. I've been away. I've been really in touch and in contact with the Holy Spirit and with God, reading the Word every single day, getting closer with my divinity and my soul every day of those two weeks. So, with what I'm going to be talking about today, it's the habit of wealth. And we're going to be in 2 Peter chapter 1, and the verse of the day is 4. I'm going to read verses 1 through 11. So we're going to be chapter 1, verses 1 through 11 of 2 Peter. And what we're going to be talking about is growing in faith. And not just that, patience and faith and persecutions. So... Through our life walk, our faith grows in Christ through all the things we go through. And Peter talks about how we are being purified into a gold. And every day, we got to use what we learn through Christ to give back and to glorify His name in everything that we do. So with this being said, I'm going to start out reading from verse 1. This letter is from Simon Peter, a slave and apostle of Jesus Christ. I am writing to you who share the same precious faith we have. This faith was given to you because of the justice and fairness of Jesus Christ, our God and Savior. May God give you more and more grace and peace as you grow in your knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. By His divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to know Him, and the one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. Here's the verse of the day, verse 4. And because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you to share this divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. So we as a par- people can overcome these desires and lusts of our eyes and of things we do in the world. Because even Jesus said himself, lovers of the world are not honoring God. So for us to love worldly things, we're not honoring God. And that's in uh, Luke, actually. Um, I got it written down. I've read so much this past two weeks. But what I'm saying is, like, we got to work on our oneness with God. And it's about love to each other. And by us doing lustful things, you know, we can hurt people or we can, you know, make decisions that we shouldn't be making out of selfishness. And when we do that, we're not putting God first in our lives. And that's why we get ourselves into these situations with sin. And, you know, when you start your life to give over, give it over to Christ and, you know, follow the path of Jesus and, you know, grow in the faith and righteousness of the Lord, you know, it's a daily progression. You're not going to just instantly be perfect as soon as you do that. That When you do that, you're a new creature. You give your new life to God, and He, and he will restore you and mold you and, uh, what's that called? You know, form you into the way He needs you to be formed for Him. You know, He took King David, a uh, just a a shepherd boy, and turned him into a king. You know, he took a Moses, a man who's killed a man who could barely speak, and turned him into one of the greatest prophets of all time. You know, he wrote the Ten Commandments. And just these small people, he can take and form you into something you you never thought God could form you into. And these are the stories that we have been passed down from the very beginning of this through generation to generation of the truth that we can stand on this foundation and it will never never wither. So with this being said, I'm going to continue. Verse 5. In view of all this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Supplement your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence and moral excellence with knowledge. And knowledge with self-control. And self-control with patient endurance. And patient endurance with godliness. And godliness with brotherly affection. And brotherly affection with love for everyone. Through all those things, we can do good. And we can all stand in the light together and walk in the light. 
And when the light shines on darkness, it shows everything with the divine presence and not just that, a divine description of what is in that darkness. And that right there is the truth. And that's why we have to be that light. We have to be that overflowing cup in everything that we do. And that's what I want to pass on to you guys. Verse 8, the more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be in your knowledge to our Lord Jesus Christ. But those who fail to develop in this way are short-sighted or blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their old sins. So you're cleansed. You can start new. Today's a new day. You can start a new way of life. And it's all on you, focusing on God. That's it. And then you grow through Him. And you learn along this way what's the right and what's the wrong. And Yeah, we're going to make mistakes. We're only human. But when we make that mistake, we got to be you know, willing to accept that we did that, admit that we did it, and change from it. And it's already forgiven. And we just repent and keep going. And that's how your faith is made stronger. That's how it grows. So dear brothers and sisters, work hard to prove that you really are among those God has called and chosen. Do these things and you will never fall away. Then God will give you a grand entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So we all want that crown. And, and you know, the only way to get it is you have to serve God in everything that you do. And, and you have to put Him first in everything. And, you know, I, I, I'm the one to say this. And, you know, I've, I've done a lot of things in my life not putting God first. But you know what? It's in the past now. I don't have to make those same mistakes ever again. That's why I want to start new today. And I want to be the creature that God's made me today. I want to stand on that truth. And I want to stand on this foundation that He's given me. And I want to pass it along to you and show you the love that God has given me that I can give to you just like you can give to other people and you can give to God first. The Habit of Wealth we are made partakers of the divine nature through the promises. Then we have to manipulate the divine nature in our human nature by habits. And the first habit to form is the habit of realizing the provision God has made. So let, that ha let our habit be that. We want to see His provisions that He's made. And we can't put our own and manipulate that. Oh, I can't afford it, we say. One of the worst lies is tucked up in that phrase. It is ungovernably bad taste to talk about money in the natural domain. And so it is spiritually, and yet we talk as if our Heavenly Father had cut off or cut us off without a shilling. We think it is it a sign of real modesty to say at the end of a day, Oh well, I have just got through, but it has been a severe tussle, and all the Almighty God is ours in the Lord Jesus. And he will tax the last grain of sand in the remotest star to bless us if we will obey him. What does it matter if external, cir external circumstances are hard? Why should they not be? If we give away to self-pity and indulge in the luxury of misery, we banish God's riches from our own lives and hinder others from entering into his provision. No sin is worse than the sin of self-pity because it obliterates God and puts self-interest upon the throne. It opens our mouths to spit out murmurings, and our lives become craving spiritual sponges. When God is beginning to be satisfied with us, He will impoverish everything in the nature, or the nature of fictitious wealth until we learn that all of our fresh springs are in Him. If the majesty and grace and power of God are not being manifested in us, God holds us responsible. God is able to make all grace abound. Then learn to lavish the grace of God on others. Be stamped with God's nature. And His blessings will come through you all the time. You know, I'm, I'm not talking about myself, but I know that God can work with, with you every single day and show you things you've never seen before along this life path of growing faith in Christ. And he, <laughs> he already knows before, you know. But uh, but we have to open our hearts to be able, and our souls to, you know, accept that every day what he gives us. 
if we aren't and we're doing things we shouldn't be doing, you ain't going to see what he's he's saying to us or trying to speak to us in things we do. That's where we got to we, we got to take that wealth, that spiritual wealth that he's given us every day so we can become rich with what God is giving us every day. You know, I was uh, when I was on this, I was watching this guy and he was talking about like, what if money that we get is given to us to give back? And, you know, you don't you don't look at it like it's just, oh, I save and hold on to it. Because there is some scripture about saving your money and, and uh, putting it back or like saving your grain and, it, and the grain you put back will mold and it's not being used and it doesn't help anybody and things of, of, along that nature. And, you know, I think that sometimes our blessings that we are given are supposed to be for blessing others too and pass that along. And when you pass that along, you expect them to keep it going too. And then we're in a whole big love circle here, just helping each other along the way. And that's that's what this is about. And, you know, we're in that light and we grow together and we can help each other grow. And just from my presence of being in somebody's life, that that's just, you know, gives them even more. You know, faith from my faith, and it keeps us holding up strong together. But it's not just for us, it's for God. And the things we do together can be worked together for the betterment of Him, our Father, who out there in heaven. So with that being said, I hope you guys like what I was talking about today. It's called the habit of wealth. And God has the abundantly more wealth than anything, you know. He's created the skies, the stars, the earth, and the waters, and the lands, and all the animals, and all, all of us. We were all chosen before we were even born, named before we were even out of the womb. And this is all from Scripture, what I'm saying here. And if, you, if you've read a lot, you'd know what I'm saying. But this is the truth, and I'm standing on it, and that's why I'm speaking this. And i got to pass it along because I want to be that overflowing cup. I want to uplift and encourage every single one of you that you guys can change your life in and through Christ. And every sing, single thing we do, every single day, and your life, well, it's not about how good you're going to be doing. It's not about the things you have and all that. It's about what's in here. And you know you can stand on the truth. And you know you can stand with courage and say, this is the truth. You know, and you're not lying. And you're shining the light on it. You can be sober and you can be vigilant and your spirit can be stronger. And when you wake up every day, you wake up with, man, I can't wait to go do what I got to do today or whatever. Because you got the power of God inside of you and it's with you everywhere you go. And that's, I mean, that's the true gift of waking up every single day. And when you do that, you stand on this foundation every day. You can pass this along and be that light for somebody who needs it that day. Because not everybody is uplifted every day, but that's why we're there. I just want to walk past somebody who needs that uplifting. Don't you? I mean, sometimes you might need it. Sometimes I need it. But that's just how life is. And if we can keep everybody else up when they're down, they can keep us up when we're down. And it, and it's a team thing. And it's all good for God. And let's stand in the light, you know. But God bless you guys. Seriously, another day He's blessed us with. Seriously, that's worth more than anything is just one day. And that's how you got to look at it. Um, I'm going to read this. Uh, I wrote this down. And it's it's just some things. Actually, I'll read it tomorrow. But if you guys want to catch up with what I'm going to read tomorrow, it's going to be a really good reading. And it's just going to open your mind to being more thankful for what you have. God bless you. I'm out of here.